backpacker's deadly nightmare. The other boulder came down and trapped him. His foot locked in a granite vise. And the other rock was about 800 pounds. Why? Alone, miles from help. A person who gets trapped in the mountains might survive two nights. Faced with a slow, agonizing death. Fading to nothing, so skinny, maybe death. What one man will do when his only weapon left is his own words. In the wild, when things go bad, they go bad fast. Without warning, your life can hang by a thread. Adventurer and survivor Craig DiMartino fought back from his own wilderness disaster to reclaim his life. Now Craig meets other courageous outdoorsmen who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. Hi, I'm Craig DiMartino. After I nearly fell to my death in a rock climbing accident, I didn't have time to contemplate my life or even ask the question of how or why it happened. I was badly injured, but I wasn't alone. Mike Turner was on a solo hike and after his accident, was very much alone with his thoughts. One way he tried to understand what was happening was to keep a journal. His words tell the story. I want to think about nature of this trip. Destructive, yet grand, spiteful and gentle. Is it all just as you want it, God? Or is it just random events and we are individually as nothing before the beneficence and destructiveness of nature? Reverend Mike Turner wrote these words in his journal on the first day of a nine-day, 60-mile solo hike deep into the wilderness of Wyoming's Wind River Range. Mike was an experienced outdoorsman and backpacker, as well as the pastor of the Boone Memorial Presbyterian Church in Caldwell, Idaho. I think being out without any distractions from the everyday was a way to really look at the magnificence of creation. The Wind Rivers were his very favorite mountains. It just looks like a huge wave. Mark Smith, a family friend, was Mike's frequent hiking companion. He loved to talk about the Wind River Mountains and the trip he'd taken when he was a young man traveling along the Continental Divide. For Mike, the hike was as much about the journey as the destination. It was a wonderful thing to go into the wilderness with him and see the wilderness through his eyes. In Mike's mind, there's a sense of God gave this beautiful thing to us as a gift, but it's also grand, dangerous, and a heck of a lot bigger than us. And that's part of what gives it the beauty. Mike named his journey Wander in Wonder. It included crossing the Continental Divide twice, traversing a glacier, and reaching 12,000 foot passes. He would then rendezvous with Mark's family, some other friends, and his own wife and kids. The plan that we set up was that he would go on his own, intentionally to be alone, intentionally to engage in a time of spiritual reflection, meditating, journaling, thinking over the past 10 years, and thinking about the possibilities for the next 10. Craig DiMartino will often leave his wife in the early morning hours to go off on a rock climb. On this August morning in 1998, Mike set out on his hike. Was it something you worried about when he left? We kissed and I said, oh, we have a great time. Be safe. We will. OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on. Later that morning, I got a bouquet of flowers sent from him yes. with a little card written in his handwriting. Thank you for letting me live this adventure. Oh, wow. You no, know, wherever I go and whatever I'm doing, I'm thinking of you. Backpacking in a place like the Wind Rivers, where you're one of the most remote areas of wilderness in the lower 48 states. Those are the days when cell phones were still pretty primitive. You better be ready for anything. Mike spent the first night by Eklund Lake and the second night on a ridge above Island Lake. Anybody, I think, who would go over that pass and see that view simply had to stop and take it in. He set up his tripod, he framed himself, he had Andy by his side, and he took what was simply a spectacular picture. The words of his journal clearly show that Reverend Mike Turner was making the spiritual connection he hoped for. With beauty and peace, you refresh me. And all of it I need. Andy's so joyful out here. 
a spirit of play alive to water and squirrels. And sometimes he just sits down so contentedly by me. God bless this trip. May it fulfill your holy purposes. But then, his idyllic adventure began to take a rugged turn. For day three, Mike had ambitious plans. He planned a hike from Island Lake across some six miles of Indian Basin. He then would ascend the 2,000 feet to the top of Indian Pass, and as he does so, it's tough going. The air gets thinner, the foliage falls away. It's a real challenge when you get up that high. Saturday, a very tough day. We would have made it over Alpine Lakes, except halfway down Knife Point Glacier. Andy's feet were obviously bothering him. So we decided to take a longer route, which turned out to be interesting. At this point, Mike deviated from the itinerary he'd given his family and friends. On the map, the alternative route that he took seemed very sensible. What he could not have known, taking that route, he ended up moving into an area where few hikers ever go. We got ourselves stuck on some cliffs and had to take some very steep snow. The pitches on the glacier were steep, and Mike wasn't carrying crampons or an ice axe. Mike and Andy finally reached a valley of beautiful wildflowers. Exhausted, they set up camp for the night. We worked hard today, faced danger and risk. Played it safe, though, too, where wisdom called for. I will remember this day. Sunday for a pastor is a working day, so Mike and Andy hiked on, struggling through even more challenging terrain. The terrain was largely boulders. It was no simple matter. Then Mike jumped from one unstable boulder to another. Just as his feet went off the edge, the other boulder came down and fell into a pocket between the rocks. It just so happened that the shape of the two rocks where his legs were trapped him. They didn't injure his legs, but did create sort of granite shackles. Sunday, about two hours ago, a large rock rolled upon me and trapped my leg. I was very careful, be sure of that. I don't know what I face. Reverend Mike Turner was backpacking deep in the Wind River Mountains. He had jumped on a loose boulder, dislodged another, and now was pinned down by a large rock. Knowing Mike, he was not gonna give up. All right, gotta get this rock off me. This was a challenge to be met. This is part of what it means to be in the wilderness. With his faithful dog by his side, he shifted into survival mode. First, he tried to move the boulder with his hands, but he had no leverage against the 800-pound behemoth. Then he tried to use part of his tripod as a lever. Miraculously, he was able to budge the rock a bit, enabling a little better blood flow to his right leg. He then set up an encampment, keeping everything he had at arm's length. If you're gonna survive, you better marshal your resources well under those circumstances. And Mike is a good survivalist, figured it out. He wrapped his sleeping bag underneath him and he jerry-rigged his rainfly to make a tent. He had his stove out next to him. He was marshalling his water supplies because the worst thing in the world for Mike Turner would be to sit there stuck between rocks engaged in mindless suffering. Yesterday was an outpouring of emotion. Today I'm more calm, in fact depressed, as I consider the helplessness of my situation. I'm concerned first about losing my legs, second, running out of snow to melt for water, and third, fuel, then hypothermia. I felt so foolish taking this longer pass, so lonely, 
who would guess no one has come this way? The purpose of this trip was isolation. He wanted to get away. He wanted to get to the other side of the divide, both physically and spiritually. It's a great place for somebody who wants to be lost. It's a pretty difficult place for somebody who wants to be found. There's no way they could miss me in my camp. I've tried to rig a shelter to protect from rain. Today, though, its greatest value is to shade me from the blazing sun. Mike's body was taking a beating. At this altitude, summer temperatures by day reached 100 degrees. By night, they dropped to just above freezing. Four grueling days passed, but Mike refused to give up his will to live. My biggest concern is water. I only have two quarts left and a little snow that was between the rocks. The irony is that the lake is only 30 feet away, but I can't get my leg to stretch that long. I am drinking one quart today, saving a quart for tomorrow. I'm also saving my urine. I wonder how it'll taste with crystal light on Friday. I made chocolate chip cookies, your Thanks. favorite. Bet your dad would like some too when we see him. While Mike remained trapped, Diane and the kids thought of him often as they prepared for their trip to meet him. They had no reason to think he had come to any harm. There are very practical matters involved when one's in a survival situation. Mike knew number one was keep warm and number two is make sure you got water. With the last of his water gone, Mike tied a rope around his water bottle along with a pair of pliers for weight. He tossed it out over the rocks, trying to reach the water 30 feet away. Hopefully, he could then pull it back in with some life-saving liquid. Five days, Reverend Mike Turner had been struggling to stay alive. Why? Trapped and immobilized, his body and mind were failing. Thursday. Last evening, I was getting my bedding set around my feet when I noticed something like a cast on the front of my leg. It was my leg without feeling. Uh, why don't you care about me? Mike was a man of God, but he was also very human, scared and suffering. God is with me, but I'm angry with him. Why this terrible injustice? Or is it the product of pride? God is good. There's always hope in him, in this life and in the life to come. I hope this life, but whatever God desires is fine. Mike had called on every survival skill he could muster, but the trap was unyielding. His mind began to play tricks on him. Mike, we are right here. We're with you, Mike. Dad, it's Katie. I'm right here, Dad. I awake from a dream with a strong sense of Diane's and Katie's presence. Everything is going to be okay, Mike. Only it's just Andy. Mike had now been trapped for six days. No one was looking for him. No one had any reason to yet. On Saturday, Mike's family arrived at the campsite and joined the others in their group to wait for Mike's arrival. Great to see it's you. Lydia, you too. Hey, is Mike here yet? No, he's hey not here. He is. Well, he's supposed to be here, so he'll be here shortly. Okay. All right. We got into Dad's light and really expected Mike to come in. Unlike most ministers I've ever known, Mike was always on time. The idea that Mike would miss a rendezvous was something that was hard to fathom. Not only that, it was kind of irritating. And every time we saw somebody coming down the trail, we hoped. Hey, Dad. Oh, hi. He'll be a long shot. Come on. Mike was 6'6". Six, six. Hard to miss him. And then our hopes were dashed. So many emotions 
swarmed around us, there was still that irritation. But slowly that irritation turned more to fear. Where do you think he might be, Mark? We do have a phone number up at the top of this map for search and rescue. We kind of looked at the maps, which had information about search and rescue on them, but fully expecting he would come in the next day on Sunday. The hours dragged on. Saturday night turned into Sunday. Where he started. We're supposed to come up here around Island Lake, right, Mark? Don't believe I ever thought Mike was lost. Very familiar with this terrain. I couldn't imagine that anything had actually happened to Mike. He was just too good. I actually believe he got hung up over in here somewhere. He understood the backcountry too well. His survival skills were too, too strong. He must be, as he did sometimes, getting caught up and getting just the perfect shot with his camera. Monday morning, nine days after Mike's accident, Mike! Mike! a massive search and rescue effort was launched. Mike! Somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 people came out to help with the search in one way or another. Everyone played a role. They had his original itinerary as a place to start. Yeah, is this Mr. June? Were you at Wind River Range this weekend? The kids called every hiker on the trailhead logs looking for any information but no luck. Next one. Mike Turner had now survived far longer than seemed possible. God will make a way, either earthly or heavenly. If this doesn't work out for my earthly salvation, I shall so miss watching and being part of the steps of the next years. I hope they're great, whether I see them on earth or watch you in love and understanding as someone who can't take his eyes off you. I love you all. God bless you. I'm praying to be with you soon. Somewhere in the course of writing the journal, he somehow knocked it off the rock or something and it fell down to where he couldn't reach it. So he couldn't write in it anymore. And he began to write on anything he could. So again, one of those interesting situations calling for ingenuity. See journal down to my right in the rocks. Getting lower. Thought I would have been found yesterday. I'm in an easy sight. All day, night, I hear helicopters. Pray they find found lost person, too. As his handwriting deteriorates, the circumstances are taking their toll. Andy is so faithful. He barks for a rock slide. So sorry I brought him. I am ready to die, except for missing my family. I will trust in God. Though he will slay me, yet I will trust him. Fill me with peace, Lord. May the conditions not change my love for you. A person trapped in the mountains might survive two nights, but usually not much more than that. And ultimately, we had to realize after a while that it was, it was a recovery effort. It wasn't a search and rescue effort anymore. Everyone was looking for Reverend Mike Turner in the Wyoming wilderness. Five days after the search was officially called off, hikers found the beloved family dog, Andy. Hey, look at that dog. Yeah. Hey, come here. Hey, buddy. I think that's the dog from the poster. It is a dog from the poster. Come, come here, here, buddy. Hey. Come here. He was by himself, and so they lured him with granola bars and brought him out with them. A new effort was launched with the dog in the lead. 31 days after Mike was trapped, but before this group would reach Mike, a lone hiker did. Hey, how you doing? What I've heard is that he saw Mike yeah, from right a distance right. and hollered and didn't get a response. And he has seen the posters at the trailhead, so he knew that somebody was missing. Mike's body was decomposed badly enough that we didn't have an option to bury him, so he was cremated. On the first year anniversary of the day Mike was to complete his solo hike, his family and close friends gathered. Decided that we wanted to go scatter some of the ashes there because that was such a place of love for him. It was really special to carry Mike's ashes on my back. We went to this spectacular field of wildflowers on the edge of Island Lake. Sat in the meadow and had a service and then at the end passed around a bag with Mike's ashes in it and spread them to the winds. I turned around and I saw this beautiful lake 
beautiful young Katie Turner standing on the edge of the lake, pouring out of this plastic bag the ashes of her father strewing out of the wind. Suffering does not have the last word. Ultimately, suffering can be redeemed. And Mike, in his own weird way, experienced the redemption of his suffering in his own reflections. Fading to nothing, so skinny. Thought I would be found by second Tuesday. Boulder wedges me in, maybe death. His fighting for survival, the way his thoughts focused in on what was really important at the time when he was facing the grittiest questions of all, that means something very powerful to me. Love, Dad, Mike. It says, love, Dad, Mike. And then there's a message over here also to his mom, love you dearly, Mom. Now, all these years later, what is it like to have his words with you? Reading the whole journal, it does show that there's peace. It helps so much in being able to um, understand what he went through. He he struggled. I mean, he was he was very honest about that. He was honest in, yeah. in the struggle. He didn't like what was going on with him. Right. You figure out in that what you're going to believe and think and and, and have those questions. He went through it and was able to say what he still believed. And that was very helpful. And it was, it was Mike, hmm. yeah. Mike left this world as the result of a close encounter with gravity and granite. These two things had an unforeseen consequence on a man who questioned that fate, but ultimately made peace with his maker across the days he remained trapped. Mike's journal is a rare and precious document that will go on teaching his family, friends, and all of us how to live, love, and never give up that fight to survive.